Welcome back to the Tech Circuit. Today we're going to bring Ohm's Law to life on the workbench. I've got a power supply that shows both voltage and current and just four resistors. Two 10 ohm resistors and two 20 ohm resistors. With only these parts, I'll show you exactly how voltage, current, and resistance all tie together. And by the end of this video, Ohm's Law will finally make sense to you. To guide us, we'll use the Ohm's Law Triangle, where V is voltage, the I is current, and the R is resistance. Cover the value you want to find, and the triangle shows you what to do. Cover the V, and you see I times R. Cover the I, and you see V divided by R. Cover the R, and you see V divided by I. Stick with me till the end, and the last example will show you how to tackle series parallel circuits, something that throws a lot of people off, but doesn't have to once you've seen it broken down step by step. Let's start simple. I'll connect a single 10 ohm resistor across a 10 volt supply. To find the current using the triangle, we cover up I and we see V over R. That's 10 volts divided by 10 ohms or one amp. And notice the power supply. Sure enough, it reads right around one amp. Perfect confirmation of our calculation. Now I'll connect two 10 ohm resistors in series. In series, resistances simply add together. 10 plus 10 gives us 20 ohms total. With 10 volts across 20 ohms, let's cover I again. V over R equals 10 divided by 20, or a half an amp. And here in the meter, you can see it's right about 0.5 amps. Doubling the resistance cuts the current in half, just as expected. In this series circuit, the current is the same everywhere, but the voltage divides between the resistors. Each 10 ohm resistor has half the supply voltage across it, about 5 volts each. Using the triangle, if we cover up V, we see I times R. Current is 0.5 amps times 10 ohms, which gives us 5 volts, which is, as you can see, what we are measuring. We'll use that again in a moment. Now, let's change it up a little. A 20 ohm resistor in series with a 10 ohm resistor. The total is 30 ohms. With 10 volts across 30 ohms, cover the I in the triangle, V over R gives us 10 divided by 30, or 0.33 amps. Now, how does the voltage divide? If we want to find the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor, it is simply based on the proportion of the total resistance that the 10 ohm resistor represents. For example, if we call the 10 ohm resistor R1, we have voltage across R1 equals the resistance of R1 divided by the total resistance in the circuit times the supply voltage. For the 10 ohm resistor, that's 10 over 30 times 10 volts, or 3.3 volts. Let's check with the meter. Sure enough, it's right about 3.3 volts. Again, Ohm's Law holds up perfectly. Next, let's put two 20 ohm resistors in parallel. How do we find the total resistance? Well, there's three ways you can do that. Since they're the same value, we can use a shortcut. You just cut the resistance of each resistor in half, and you have 10 ohms. Or we can use the product over the sum rule, which is 20 times 20 divided by 20 plus 20, or 400 divided by 40, or 10 ohms. We get the same answer. Or you can use a reciprocal formula if you have more than two resistors. 1 over RT would be 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 equals 2 over 20, or 1 tenth, and the reciprocal of that is 10 ohms. All three methods give us the same answer, 10 ohms. And when we measure with the meter, yep, we're right at about 10 ohms. Now, let's look at how current behaves in a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, the voltage across each branch is the same. So in our example, with the two 20 ohm resistors in parallel, each resistor gets the full 10 volts. Now, I cover the I on the triangle, so V over R is 10 divided by 20, which gives one half of an amp through each resistor. Since there are two branches, the total current is one amp. If one resistor was 10 ohms and the other was 20 ohms, for example, then the 10 ohm branch would carry more current. To find the current through each resistor, I cover I again, and 10 volts over 10 ohms is one amp versus 10 volts over 20 ohms, which is 0.5 amps. So the 10 ohm resistor carries twice the current, and the total circuit current is 1.5 amps. Now, sometimes when you need to find the current through one of the resistors, you may know the current coming into the parallel branch, but may not know the voltage across that branch. Never fear, there's a way to figure that out. You see, as you may have noticed, when unlike resistors are in parallel, the lower resistances carry more current. In fact, the current through any given resistor is I R1 equals I total times R2 divided by R1 plus R2 or 1.5 amps times 20 ohms divided by 10 ohms plus 20 ohms, which is equal to 1 amp. Although that formula can certainly be used, it is easier for some to use simple ohms law if you know the voltage across the branch, which would equate to 10 volts divided by 10 ohms or 1 amp. 
So here are a few important takeaways about parallel circuits. When you connect two resistors in parallel, you're not stealing current from one to give to the other. Instead, you're giving current another path to flow through, almost like adding another lane on a highway or another pipe for water. Each resistor in parallel provides its own separate route for current. So the more parallel resistors you add, the more total current the circuit can carry. In other words, every added branch actually increases the total current drawn from the power source. Let's consider a simple example. On your electric cooktop, all the burners are wired in parallel. So if you use only one burner, you are drawing about 8 amps from the house supply. If though you switch on another burner, you're basically adding another resistor in parallel. Because of that, now the electric range draws twice the current, or 16 amps from the house supply. Another key takeaway about parallel circuits is that more of the total circuit current flows through the branch with the lower resistance, but not all of it. Every branch gets some share of the current, and that share is inversely proportional to its resistance. The higher the resistance, the lower the share. The lower the resistance, the greater the share. In other words, current favors the path of least resistance, but it still travels through every available path to some degree. So that old phrase you may have heard, electricity takes the path of least resistance, isn't quite accurate. A better way to think of it is this. Current favors the path of least resistance, but will take all available paths no matter how high their resistance. Finally, let's look at series and parallel combination circuits. They're a lot easier to understand than you may think. Say a parallel pair connected in series with another resistor. The triangle still works. First, find the resistance of the parallel pair, then add the series resistance. With the total resistance known, cover the I of the triangle, and V over R gives us a total current. From there, you can use V equals I times R, or R equals V divided by I, to work out any part of the circuit. It's all just stacking the simple rules that we've been using. For example, two 20 ohm resistors in parallel, using our rules, has an equivalent resistance of 10 ohms. If we put another 10 ohm resistor in series with that, we would have a total of 20 ohms. If we connect a 10 volt supply across that, we should get 10 volts divided by 20 ohms equals 0.5 amps. And we should also get 5 volts across the parallel branch because its equivalent resistance is one half of the total resistance of the circuit. Let's check all that out. And yes, the current is about 0.5 amps. And now the voltage across that parallel pair is right at about 5 volts. So here's what we learned in this video. Ohm's law ties voltage, current, and resistance together. And the triangle gives you a quick way to solve for any of them. In series, resistance is add and current stays the same, but voltage divides. In parallel, voltage stays the same, resistance decreases, and current divides. Mixed circuits are just combinations of these rules. I hope this demonstration made Ohm's Law click for you. If it did, give this video a like, share it with a fellow technician or aspiring engineer, and subscribe for hundreds of practical demonstrations on electrical theory. Links to the test equipment used in this video are in the video description. Purchasing equipment through my affiliate links helps support this channel. And always remember, these demos are for educational purposes only. Low voltages were used in this demonstration, and safety precautions were taken here to avoid overheating components, and you should always handle electricity with care.